All right, let's get started. We got an exciting episode tonight. Uh, tonight we're tasting the uh, Bourbon Rabbi release of the uh, Hartfield uh, Weed Blend. This is uh, it's 100 proof. This is just a sample bottle. This is all I was able to get for tonight. Um, the bottles are going to ship soon, and uh, anyone that has ordered one should get it soon. And uh, if you haven't gotten one yet, you can go to bourbonrabbi.com and order those those now. So. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Rosh Hashanah is the uh, the Jewish New Year. Starts tomorrow uh, evening. It's uh, celebrated around the world by Jewish people, uh, marking the New Year. It's the day we recommit to God and reaccept God as our King. Uh, so there's many ways that the uh, holiday is celebrated, and the symbolism behind these things is very very meaningful. Uh, one of the more commonly known things that we do is blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. Uh, the shofar is uh, a horn, usually a ram's horn, uh, that is blown in uh, synagogues in a, a series of sounds. Uh, it could be uh, other types of horns as well. Um, the Sephardic community uh, uses a really, really big one, uh, you know, with uh, two or three revolutions in it, rounds in it, uh, from a uh, African kudo. Um, there are uh, many different uh, types of horns, but primarily the ram's horn is used. And uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons that the, the horn is used. Uh, one of them is when kings were coronated uh, back in the day, King David, King Solomon, etc. Uh, part of that coronation ceremony was the blowing of the shofar. So now on Rosh Hashanah, when we're accepting God as our king, we're coronate, uh, coronating him. We blow the shofar then as well um, in recognition of that. Um, another reason uh, for blowing the shofar is it has a resemblance to a cry. Uh, there's three different uh, sounds that we blow, representing three different types of crying and, you know, pleading out, uh, which is uh, supposed to remind us of repenting and, and help us with that connection, reconnect with God um, at this suspicious time. Uh, also, uh, when we got the Ten Commandments, we uh, sounded, the, the shofar was sounded then as well. It's supposed to remind us of that and that connection that we have uh, with God. The, uh, the horn itself is usually from a ram. And another, uh, you know, the symbolism behind that, obviously, is with uh, Abraham when he uh, sacrificed the ram instead of his son Isaac uh, at the Akedah. Uh, another thing we do on Rosh Hashanah is eat. There's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of customs uh, inside of uh, the meal in uh, in what we eat on this day. Uh, we begin the meal with a cup of wine, like usual, like any uh, you know Shabbat or holiday dinner. Uh, the next part, though, is the challah, the bread that we eat. Uh, usually it would just be a, a regular shaped loaf, uh, but for Rosh Hashanah we use round loaves of challah, uh, symbolizing uh, a circle of life and continuity. Um, the, uh, the challah actually uh, commonly has raisins uh, mixed in with it, and instead of dipping in salt, we dip it in honey, uh, symbolizing that sweetness uh, that we, you know, we want to we wanna get for the coming year. Uh, next we eat uh, apples dipped in honey, again stressing that, uh, that sweetness. Uh, pomegranates are very commonly eaten. Um, the reason for that is uh, to symbolize um, an abundance and plenty. Um, our wish, you know, for the coming year that everything should be uh, plentiful and in abundance, just like the seeds of a pomegranate. Um, another classic food that uh, we eat on Rosh Hashanah is tzimis. Tzimis is a uh, carrot-based dish. It's got uh, raisins and honey and pineapple, a uh, very, very sweet uh, cooked dish. Uh, the reason for that is that in Yiddish, the the w name of that food is mirin. Mirin is uh, also means uh, increase. Uh, so it's uh, you know for our wish to have increased sweetness and and goodness in the coming year. Um, a lot of people have the custom to eat uh, from the head of a fish or a ram on Rosh Hashanah, um, symbolizing our wish to you know be a head, be a leader, as opposed to a tail. And there are uh, many, many such customs. Um, all, you know, some people like to eat uh, raisins and celery so that they get a raisin salary. Um, but yeah, there's a, a lot of customs out there, and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, different types of um, usually sweet uh, types of food that we eat. Speaking of sweetness, we have something fantastic here tonight. This is uh, Harfel and Company. This is the uh, Bourbon Rabbi release. Um, so I was uh, visiting their uh, distillery out in Paris, Kentucky. I believe it's the only distillery in Bourbon County. Um, yes, in Kentucky, there's a, uh, a county called Bourbon. Um, it's uh, just west of Lexington. 
Um, and I believe this is the only uh, operating distillery at this time in uh, Bourbon County. Um, so we, uh, we went through about 20 barrels there and narrowed it down to three barrels, blended it together, and came out with this fantastic option. Um, so this is uh, a very, very uh, weeded bourbon uh, relative to the rye and barley, which there isn't any of. So this is 80% corn, 20% uh, malted wheat. So very heavy on, on the wheat uh, relative to the other uh, grains. Super, super dark, especially for, uh, for a young bourbon. I don't know if you can uh, see that in there. Uh, it's got a uh, dark brown, like a mahogany type color. Um, and like I said, no, no rye and no barley. So let's uh, go for the nose. Uh, super unique. I know I, I had some of this a little earlier today, so uh, some some of the uh, the flavors and notes are are already in my head. Um, but yeah, I'm getting a lot of sweetness, like uh, almost like a candy sweet. Absolutely phenomenal. Baruch Atah Adonai Lohan Machalam Shachol Niyeh B'Tvaro. Absolutely, I mean it's it's just so unique, so different than uh, than anything else I've I've tasted really. Um, it's got almost like a coolness to it, as opposed to to that uh, fire that you usually expect in a bourbon. Um, super sweet, almost like a mocha coffee type of taste. Yeah, that finish just comes down. Those chocolate notes uh, from the, the the palate come down into the finish. Then you start feeling that that spice that really wasn't really there in the palate. It comes down just for a full, just a fantastic finish. Absolutely amazing. Uh, if you'd like to get one, again, bourbonrabbi.com. Uh, Shana Tova. May you all be inscribed in the Book of Life. And may we all have a happy, healthy, sweet new year. L'chaim. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all the latest videos. Thanks so much. L'chaim.